Hello everyone. Welcome back to our YouTube channel. Uh, firstly, guys, uh, I would like to wish you well for your upcoming assessments. And I know it's not that easy. And then I know that with God's grace, we can be able to pass at the end of the day. Uh, guys, I would like to ask uh, for uh, uh, just a, you know, a small favor. Uh, please, may you please like the videos, you know, sometimes, you know, it helps a lot. So this helped me to bring more content when it comes to these sessions. You know that I'm just doing this for free, but when you do like on the YouTube, so this will help us a long way. So please like uh, as you uh, watch these videos. Uh, if you, you know, just comment at the same time, you know, that helps a lot. So without wasting time. I just want us to go through this exercise uh, because I've been getting a lot of, uh, you know, uh, requests when it comes to this topic. Uh, this topic can be a bit confusing, especially if you don't have the basics around the correspondence. Remember, you still need the basic accounting principles, but you must apply them in, you know, uh, according to accounting for law, if you know what I mean, okay, in a legal way. So at the end of the day, I just decided to make sure that I come up with this kind of a video uh, so that you can be able to grasp some of the basics when it comes to legal accounting. Uh, please, guys, if you need this question, you can email me. Uh, I think you do have my emails, guys. I think I do post uh, on my... You know, I do post those who subscribe to my uh, channel, you know that you can be able to access that uh, on my community, you know, platform. So I'll post it there and then you can access the question there as a PDF question. I hope everyone is okay. So let's just go through this just to check if we can be able to understand this or not. Okay. As you can see here, guys, we do have a question here whereby they say, you send the following to your correspondent who has instructed you in two matters on behalf of the same client. If we're two matters here, we need to make sure that we account this information in the books of accounts. Remember, you are the instructed attorney. You are not the instructing attorney. You have been instructed. So you perform of the instructing attorney and you gave the results. Remember, those results uh, need to be uh, recorded. So that's why this statement must be put in the, into your account so that you can be able to know your fees. You can be able to know that you recovered whatever you paid on the, uh, during the whole process. So at the end of the day, you need to make sure that you account for everything. I hope everything makes sense so far. So you are the instructed attorney. So you are performing, you are the one who's performing. So it means the first, as you can see, the first matter here is between the male and the female. Can you see now I just came up with this name? Male and the female here, as you can see here, there are activities or the transactions which took place of which have been summarized in the form of a statement. And the other one uh, for male and the male decided to divorce, you know, for some reasons. And thereafter, again, there are costs involved and then, you know, and the incomes uh, and other you know, related, financial related matters. So at the end of the day, we need to know how to account for this. Okay, now let's check here. You can see that the first case here where we've got male versus female, we do have fees, we do have, uh, 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 we pay sheriffs, you know, we, 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 we do have fees again, because we've got fees, this is the case that we received from what? Uh, from the female, remember when we were, uh, uh, acting on behalf of the maid. So the female uh, gave us the 30,000. So you must know how to account this, okay? You need to break down the information before you can go uh, and account for this. For example, if you can check here, uh, here, this is the statement that you have sent. Can you see now? You sent this statement to your uh, to, uh, instructing, uh, the instructing attorney. So you need to make sure that you account for these books, like I said. So you can see here, we did here, we did charge a fee of 3,000, and thereafter we've got another fee of 1,500, we've got 450, can you see now? And we've got 1,000, so all these fees must be accounted for. So, so far you can see that I've got fees, one, uh, two, 
three, four. So I'm going to add them together by the time when I account in the books. Can you see now? Because there are two meters, I'm going to have how many fees? I'm going to have two fees. So if you can check here, here I have what? A fee of how much? Of 12,000 here. Can you see now? Can you see now? But at the end of the day, remember, we did charge the fee, but at the same time, when we collected money from the female, we also got other fees. So before we can take our own fees, we're going to compare the fees we charged and the fees we collected, and thereafter, the difference is what will belong to us. So in the books of accounts, we are going to account what belongs to us. So whatever we charged, we minus whatever we collected, and thereafter, the difference is going to be what belongs to us. The difference is what we are going to account in our income uh, uh, statement, and you can call it a profit and loss. But I'm just going to take you step by step when it comes to this information. Okay. So firstly, uh, we need to check that. Okay, I'm going to start with uh, the first statement. As you can see here, the first statement here, I received a cash when I was performing on this matter. So I received a cash from female because we are, our client is male here. So female, we collected 30,000 from female. So we need to account for this information. We must show that we received money from female, but our client is male. But this is how it's going to look like. So if you can check here, guys, I do have accounts which I'm going to open. So you can see here, I've got what you call the trust book, guys. Uh, you can call it trust book, but for me, I prefer to call it a trust bank account. I think it makes sense. But even if you call it a trust book, it's still okay. So they will still allow that. So I'm going to call this or you can call it or trust bank, okay? A book or a bank, trust bank. So I prefer to call it trust bank. And this one, I prefer to call it the uh, the business bank okay i think those who have been following me you know that uh, i always use that but you know your book sometimes when you go and write your articles you know uh, exams they normally say you must uh, deal with the trust cash book and the tr uh, business cash book can you see now so at the end of the day you need to make sure that you know that it's the same as the trust bank and the, uh, the business bank so in that way i will be able to understand better because you know I can understand the movement between the banks. Okay. So this part, all in all, I'm going to call it uh, the, the, now, this part, I'm going to call it uh, the trust books. You know, uh, this will be called uh, my trust books. Trust books. Just to make sure that, you know, I, I, I differentiate between uh, this. Uh, so I'm going to call it trust books. Okay. This will be my trust books at the end of the day. So I've got the. Uh, the, the, the trust uh, book, and then I've got what? Uh, the business book. So this will be the trust. It will be under the trust. I think you understand when I say trust. It's the money that we get from our client. So when we collect money from on behalf of our clients, we need to put them in a specific book. In this case, a specific book is going to be the trust book. So this one is going to be the business books. Can you see now? I'm just saying, I'm just explaining what I've explained before, guys. So if we go further, I just want to check uh, these accounts quickly. I'm going to open what we call uh, the, car, uh, the correspondent trust. In other words, remember when uh, I, I, as a correspondent, so when I collect money, obviously that money must also go to what? To the, the trust. So I must not touch that money because that money belongs to the trust. But you'll see by the time when we go through these steps, uh, this uh, step by step. And then I'm also going to open what you call, you see, it will come the correspondent business. Remember, at the end of the day, as the instructed attorney, we're also running a business. So we need to account what belongs to our business. Like I, I, I indicated before, sometimes you can find that we pay some of the expenses on behalf of the client. So those expenses, yes, we pay them from our own business account, but at the same time, we must go and deduct them from what? From the client himself or herself. So at the end of the day, we need to show what belongs to us. At the same time, we need to make sure that we account for VET. Remember, if we have VET vendors, obviously, we need to account for VET. So they according, sometimes they just say output VET, because in most cases, we've got output VET. But I prefer to call it SARS. You know, I'm going to, sometimes you can call it uh, SARS, uh, SARS 
control account because I know that if I call it status control account, it will accommodate both input and the output. But even if you put it as output, you are still going to have the same results. But I'm going to show you how to deal with it. Okay. And then uh, this is what I'm going to have at the moment. And then I'm going to show you all these uh, slabs. But I think everyone wants to play at the moment. So I still have to open an account called fees. So I I'm, I'm don't have fees, but I'm going to uh, put fees there after. I hope everyone is following. Thank you very much for that. And then I'm going to uh, do part two, whereby I record in the books of account. 